Good evening, everybody. My name is Warden, and I will be your host for tonight's entertainment. If this room seems unfamiliar to you, that would be because it is. I just built this last night, and this is the, uh, the somewhat bare control area for my brand new communications tower. It's very work in progress still. I still have a lot of uh, aesthetic tweaks I'd like to make to it. It's a little um, unstable looking. The base I wish I could have expanded out a little bit more. Definitely nothing that the SCDCA would approve of or allow, but uh... They're not here to yell at me, so uh, fuck those guys. I have made use of a variety of different materials in hopes that this will help to conduct the, uh, the communications magic upward once I get it going. Of course, the framework isn't all that needs to be done. I still have a whole lot of work cut out for me in order to get this finished. As, uh, this communications tower is going to require a lot of, uh, expensive and painful to acquire materials. Now, I have no intention of sitting down and grinding out Elementum and Terra Steel on camera, nor do I have the intention of doing so with Void Metal, which leaves me, uh, with three options. I could do the ritual of opening the eye and go to the Outer Lands to get Ancient Rock, I could set up the Hungry Node feeding mechanism. Or I could start Witchery and go get other Wear Chalk. Which, uh, I am not very experienced with Witchery, I'll be completely frank. I'm a little bit scared to start it because uh, I like to know what I'm doing when I start something, and not knowing what I'm doing is, uh, something I'm not fully comfortable with. On the progression side of things, Mostly just aesthetic changes. I decorated the Endo Flame Feeder, as you can see, though it is currently empty and therefore inactive. And I have decorated down here. I've added a uh, arcane levitator, and I've begun the bare bones of making rooms to work in in Botania. I've moved the crafting mana pools down here the pure daisies to this room, and the Alfheim portal, which I have decorated, and which for some reason turns off every time I turn my back, so uh, there's that. I'll just turn it on whenever I need it, and I know that's technically a waste of mana, but I have, uh, I have no other options. I've done a little bit of decorating to this island, I've added lamp posts to hopefully get rid of some of the torches that I have set up. I've put some nature down, as uh, having plants and stuff around is really nice. And I did finally get around to refurbishing this bridge so that it is no longer a spaghetti monster of just slabs fucking everywhere. And other than that, not much has been changed. I've been focusing on preparing myself for the long, hard grind of getting this tower done. So, how exactly do I plan to turn this tower into something that I can use to talk to the rest of the team? As, uh, right now, it's about as inert as every other building that I have. Well, I do have what I plan to make into a basement space. Now, it is going to go smack dab right in the middle of where I was planning to put the town hall for the village. But, um, it's fine. I can just move the town hall to elsewhere, or, um, not have one at all and let them, uh, choose what type of government that they would like to have. Either way, um, yes, this is where I plan to have my, uh, my, um, conduit array. Having it at the bottom of the tower does seems like it might be counterintuitive, but there's actually a bit of logic to this. You see, what I plan to do is basically create, um, a ball of magical energy that, um, when activated, will be conducted up through the middle of the tower, upwards into the sky, much like a magical railgun. What this will do is 
hopefully punch through whatever communications jamming system this planet has. As um, if there wasn't a communications jamming, I would already be able to talk to the team on the comms. Whether or not the uh, communications jamming is uh, her doing, or just an unfortunate side effect of this planet basically having cancer, is irrelevant to me. I will punch through it. So creating this reactor in my basement is uh, going to be a fun endeavor. Not the first time I've had a reactor in my basement, though this is the first time the reactor has uh, had the least amount of chance to blow up. So I'm going to sit down the, uh, the framework for this um, reactor basement and then decide from there which path I would like to take first because I f have a feeling that I'm going to be needing all of the materials that are listed there. If not all of them, then most of them and I will have no way of knowing which ones aren't needed until I have everything set up. So I'm just going to quickly set up a, uh, a room down here, and then once that is done, we will sit down and we will plan. In the meantime, while I build this uh, little room, why not have the time lapse of uh, me building this tower? Hope you enjoy it.
welcome back. Unfortunately, I couldn't get the room down there finished as uh, I ran out of materials, but let's sit here in our office and review. While I was down there ruminating as I built, I got to thinking which one of these incredibly painful to get materials I should get started on. I have decided that because it's the most dangerous thing, because it's going to require the most work to get going, I'm going to go with the Hungry Node. I already have Obsidian, I do already have the Hungry Node as you saw. I have the required materials, I just need to get around to automating it. A long time ago, when I was uh, just starting out Thomcraft, I sat down and I made a bunch of constructs for the explicit purpose of helping me automate some stuff. And then I never used them. So I think this is the perfect opportunity to put them to good use. So there are better items to feed to the Hungry Node. But the biggest one that I prefer is crafting tables, because Fabrico can be broken down into every single primal aspect. If we go through here, where is it? As you can see, it's made out of Instrumentum and Humanus. Instrumentum breaks down into Ordo and Humanus, so already one primal aspect. From Humanus you get Cognito, which breaks down into... Uh, Ignis or Spiritus. Spiritus can break down into Mortis, which has Chaos, or Life, which is Water and Earth. And um, Bestia has Modus, which breaks down into Air and Ordo. So every single primal aspect is contained within a crafting table. Now there are two main roadblocks to doing this setup. One, I have to make sure that every crafting table goes into the node one at a time. In ye olden days, uh, a stack of items would get processed as a stack of items. In um, this version of Thomcraft, however, a stack of items will get processed as a single one of those items in order to nerf feeding setups a little bit. However, this changes nothing for me. It will just simply make my life very slightly harder. So, let us put our uh, book away and um, get the setup going for our Hungry Node Feeder. So we'll want the node itself, the creature. We'll want a chopping animation core. And uh, I'm hoping that I can keep this to a minimal amount of space. I think I'm going to be basing it around birch wood, as those trees never grow too tall. They're never like oak wood trees, where sometimes they have a random chance of growing huge. Birch wood trees are always around the same height. So we'll get ourselves some starter birch saplings. We'll get ourselves some obsidian for the cage itself. And uh, we'll need to figure out which kind of animation cores we'll need in order to set up the uh, the constructs to feed the node in the first place. So we'll go over to uh, this tab, and let's see... I think what I'm going to do is make um, a Thaumium construct for the chopping, as stronger constructs will chop wood faster. I am also going to make the constructs advanced, as uh, adding the ability to make them smarter and faster and able to ho hold more upgrades will be much more useful. And uh, to offset the slight malevolence that they become infused with as a result of the zombie brains, I'll just pay them. We'll work out a, we'll work out a union deal together and just uh, offset that entire rebellion thing altogether. So uh, we need chop. We will probably need gather. But first things first, let's uh, advance these boys and make ourselves an iron boy or thaumium boy. And let's make a thaumium. Let's make a thaumium little guy. Thaumium block, humanus, modus spiritus, easy. And let the thaumatorium assemble our boy. There we go, brand new boy. Putting the jars away. Now let's advance our boys. This involves uh, doing a thaumic ritual, which will put some brains in our scarecrows. 
We'll advance six of them for now, and then if we ended up end up needing more, we'll uh, add more. Now I am going to be making a testing area down on the ground first before I fully set out to set this up underneath the uh, hungry node. As uh, the last thing I want is for me to get all this materials together and then I set up my little boys and they uh, completely fail to do their job and die. Let us advance our uh, fun little guys. So we will want Victus, we will want Census, and Cognito. You want to put the... Oh, uh-oh. Whoops, I forgot that they do that. They'll just be placed into the world. Stay there, young man. There we go. You want to shift-click your fun little guy onto the pedestal, or else he will place. Just as a forewarning. Pull out our wand. There we go. Our boy is being infused. This will put a brain in your scarecrow for sure. And there we go, easy peasy. So I'll finish this ritual for the other guys, and uh, get back to you when the, this is all said and done. Whoops. Making the uh, the fleshy boy may have been... Uh, that just gave me a little bit of warp. And uh, depending on how things go, that might have been really, really bad. Because I've been abstaining from gaining warp until I can get it all at once. Because of the way uh, warp works. You see, um, warp effects will stop happening if you abstain from gaining warp for a period of time. Even though my warp is uh, rather high, I have not been getting any warp effects because I've been abstaining from warping activities. Or at least until now. We'll have to see um, what happens in the future. Yep, give me warp again. Okay. So, uh, no worries, no worries. Uh, this just gives me an excuse to finish all that thomic research that uh, gives warp off right away. Because uh, I don't really have a choice anymore. Let me get set up. So we'll need this, we'll need this, this. Organize my inventory. I'm going to fit my Lumberjack with an order upgrade just to see if maybe that will make it so that he replants. Because by default, these little boys don't know how to replant trees. Let's give uh, our Harvester the Earth Gut upgrade so that he harvests just a little bit faster. And I believe um, the quest book had something on uh, animations, animation uh, upgrades. Yeah, here we go. Okay, so I want to make fire and air, so you know what, I'll just make one of each. Just because that's easier than individually deciding which ones. There we go, now we have extras of each. Now, I believe this is all I need to make the testing. Outside- oh wait, shit, I need to, uh, how the hell are they gonna craft the wood into, uh, fucking crafting tables. Here we go. The Constructs Workbench will allow me to uh, make our little guys um, able to craft shit. So I know very little about the way the, uh, the Constructs Workbench works. I know that um, it's uh, what well, it lets the Constructs craft shit. I know that it has to be very simple recipes, which thankfully the crafting table is. And um, I know that uh, it requires a variety of upgrades for it to be even moderately useful. Alright, we're getting closer and closer to seeing if I can get a tree harvesting set up. Once I have this tested, I'll also make experiments in making sure that it is um, sufficiently compacted as well. So that I can fit it into my basement without much issue. Alright, our little Constructs workbench. And now we'll need a empty core. 
which has uh, Lucrum and Vacuos. My inventory is getting a little bit full, so how about I set a bunch of this shit down in a random area where I plan to start testing this? How about, uh, down there looks like a nice flat spot to try this out in. So set a bunch of this crap down here. There we go. I'll take the chest just in case. Actually, let's get an empty and a filling. So, uh, it's the same recipe, just with, uh, Fames instead of, uh, Lucrum. So well, we'll take our animation cores. Fuck it. Bring the... that one, too. There we go. Now that should be everything we need to test this. Feeding a hungry node is uh, nothing to sneeze at. It's very, very, very dangerous. Because of the uh, untold destruction a, uh, an untended to hungry node can cause. Now that we have our necessary animation cores, let us go down to the testing area. Okay, here we are. I went and I quickly crafted some uh, fill and empty cores off screen, as well as a second constructs workbench, because uh, I forgot that uh, you can't just make crafting benches out of um, logs. You kind of, um, you kind of need a, uh, you kind of need to turn them into planks first. So first things first, we will see if our lumberjack. Will harvest. So first, uh, there we go. And then, okay. Now, hello little man. I'm gonna turn off my coin for this. Let's grow this. Uh, ooh, I'm rusty. <laughs> oh, there you go. Good boy. Yes, you did such a good job. So he will not replant, but that is okay. We will just um simply have to uh figure out a way to have him do that. But we do know now that our boy will uh do the work. So let's take our next boy. And then if I tell him, I believe, according to Automagy, Good boy! Yes, it works. Okay. Yes, yes. Good boy. You're doing a very good job. Yes, very, very good. So, I'm kind of seeing how the assembly line can be formed now. We'd have Lumberjack here, chopping down trees. We'd have a gatherer taking these items and putting them in the bench. We'll have this handsome young man crafting them and putting them into this chest. We'll have a construct with provide, providing to the second workbench over here, which will be crafting the crafting tables. Then we'll have a, uh, a gatherer put it into another chest, which will ha be hooked up to a system, which will one by one feed them to the, feed the crafting benches to the hungry node. I think I know how to make it so that the sapling is replanted. I think a provider core will also do that as well. Okay, so I was doing a little bit of research to see if maybe other people have chanced upon a, uh, 
design that was effective for a tree farm, and I did find um, one such design. So uh, I will be linking to the tutorial that I use. Well, to the tutorial that I'm roughly referencing for this down below in the description so that you can see it for yourself. It basically comes down to you want to use a construct with a use core, which uh, I didn't know worked for saplings, but I guess now that I think about it, it makes perfect sense. And you want to have it uh, basically um, placing them in a checkerboard pattern, then you have your lumberjacks going around doing a chopping, and then uh, so on and so forth. So I'm going to get myself some more birch saplings, and I'm going to set up the uh, the rough draft of the uh, the crafting table factory. We will also have to come up with a uh, design for the feeder. I feel like the empty crate might be the best design for that, because empty crates will only ever unleash one item at a time, and it just matters whether or not it comes in a stack, not how far apart it is. So you can rapidly inject items into a hungry node just as long as it's not all stacked together. So I can set up a very simple, very basic redstone clock mechanism that will carefully time out the hopper so that it, it, it spits out an item like, I don't know, once every second. It's definitely um, harder to feed a hungry node um, in a world without uh, stuff like uh, teleport pipes or build craft, I'll tell you that. But uh, that's part of the challenge, I guess. So we'll want this young man. You want to have use. Uh, let's see. If I tell him to... And then, uh, let's see. We'll do this. And then you will want to, uh... Okay, will you plant them? Yes, you will! Good boy! Very good boy. Okay. We will have our lumberjack. So we'll set your home to here. There we go. Okay. Now we will fit you with chop. And then uh, do we have gather? Yes, we do. So we have a chest. We'll take this workbench. And uh, we'll put the uh, workbench upgrades in later. This is just a proof of concept. I wonder, do I need the gatherer in the first place? Can I just have you put the shit in here? I can never remember the difference between tallow and fleshies. Right, tallows are just more upgradable. And uh, flesh boys are fast. So actually, let's have um, the gatherers be fleshy boys. Because they're fast. There we go. We'll give the uh, the lumberjack a little bit of time. Good boy. And uh, why are you not putting it away? Oh, okay, I have to uh, attach you to an inventory. That makes perfect sense. Okay. Yeah, you know what? Let's put uh put sappings in there. Well, hmm. Do I need a boy with sorting actually here because it drops a byproduct, or do I uh? Okay, no, I'll just have two gathery boys. So, you are only allowed to pick up birchwood. You will have the uh the gather core. Grow that for my boy. Turn around, the tree. My boy, the tree! Why do you not get the tree? Oh, there we go. Okay, very, very good. So he will, in fact, uh, place them in this chest. So could I have him linked to another bench instead of this chest? Thank you. 
So if I take this, and I go like this, and I provide the materials, and then I have my very smart good boy. Now let's uh, complete our test. Grow this tree. And uh, I will have this fleshy boy taking the birch saplings and putting them back in the chest for uh, our user. There we go. You are only allowed to pick up birch saplings. So you will pick them up for your buddy. And you'll put them away for him. Yes, so it looks like this factory is uh, going to work out just fine. So to, reca so to recap, this tallow construct takes saplings out of this chest and places them right here. The lumberjack, which is this thonium construct, will chop them down. This, um, the flesh construct here will gather up the wood. Meanwhile, this flesh construct will gather up the saplings and put them back in the chest. This tallow construct will take the planks he makes, puts them in this workbench. This work, uh, this tallow boy will craft them into crafting tables. And uh, I can already see how easy this will be to make much more compact. So a uh, test completed. You guys are all doing amazing jobs. I cannot wait to see you out in the field doing your thing. And look at that, 34 crafting tables. Already this is bang for your buck. Okay, there we go. Then I will just take my dolly and come get this chest, move it up to the, uh, the factory to be, and get everything set up. So now that I have a design for the factory, I'm going to pick up the chest full of boys. I'm going to finish the room down there. And uh, we are going to set up the tiniest tree farm known to man. So as I build this, I can already foresee having to make multiple rooms. This should not be an issue in terms of the conduit. Worst comes to worst, I can make um, relays of sorts that will force the signal in towards the center. As long as everything is within proximity to the main body of the tower, it should be completely fine. All that matters is that the signal can get coalesced into an SOS railgun that is shot up into the sky and hopefully through whatever is jamming the, jamming the communications. That's all I care about. So I think I want this basement to be a little bit banged up and dingy looking. As I'm setting down the base for this, I'm sort of envisioning maybe using carpenter's blocks to create nicks and scratches in the, uh, in the walls here. Things that sort of age the build. Maybe I'll add a couple of uh, variations to the stone, maybe um, hearts where it's like pushed back and weathered so that you can see like, I don't know, like the rebar or whatever that holds it together. Something that I think would be really cool looking. There we go. So yes, I can absolutely see foresee this becoming a multiple rooms thing. In the meantime though, let's find the center of this. This is uh, just this is just a hole to mark the spot. This is where the hungry node will go. Because I think most importantly, the hungry node, which I think is going to be the core of coalescencing this uh, setup has to be in the middle. That's, I think, the only part of it that needs to be in the middle. So I'm going to go get the obsidian blocks from downstairs to make the hungry node cage. And, uh, let's go set up the beast. Oakley dokely. You'll want the corners to be filled in because the hungry node can actually damage you from if you are uh, sucked into the corners. And uh, I want a window. Let's face the. Let's actually have a viewport. I want to have a viewport so I can see the node being fed. And uh, set this up, set this up. I'm going to just quickly go get the glass. But, uh, yeah, this thing is intimidating, to say the least. So here's what I'm hoping to attach to the feeding mechanism. I want it to be fed from below, I think. I'll have, um, the constructs crafting stuff 
right here through this way drop it into a chest which has an open crate attached i'll just drop it unceremoniously into a water stream one by one and then it'll come up here and uh it will be fed into the node just by um, the sheer amount of gravity it possesses because the hungry node is able to pull blocks and items in this one in particular at least from over 14 blocks away which is nothing to sneeze at so yeah, I'll just set up this, the obsidian shoots. I want it to be double layer because again, it can pull things diagonally. Not well, but it can. And then I'll set up the rest of the shoot later. Warded glass. Uh, I need to set up something in front of it for temporarily because it will pull blocks from in front of it. Okay, this way it won't destroy the wall. Ooh. Immediately getting sucked in. It has a hard time pulling on flying players, but yeah, that is, uh, that's the power of the beast. <sighs> You're one intimidating looking motherfucker, you know that? And this is why we need the, uh, the wand focus of, uh, Blink, so that way I can escape its pull easily. I'm going to have to make sure that the constructs are not able to get into this room. Otherwise they'll get sucked up against the side of it and not be able to escape. I wouldn't mind having a, uh, an add-on bit, honestly, to the boulder. Having, like, a sticky out bit that I could turn into maybe, um, a sort of patio. If that's what it ends up coming to it so that the constructs can work properly, I'll do it. I can add a little patio type area. And underneath it is where the constructs will be at work. There we go. Sign. And then... Water. And then if I throw it, should go down the water, cross the ice into the other stream, get sucked in. Okay. So that's the general gist of it. So for now, we just want this. There we go. And now we want uh, our open crate, which will face down. Hopper that feeds into it when an item is in the hopper. No, wait, uh. Shit, never do redstone on camera, kids. Actually, yeah, never do redstone on camera, kids. Um, I'm gonna go into a be right back mode. So, uh, see ya! Okay, I'm back. So, this is a very simple setup that uses a combination of Batania and a uh, regular vanilla redstone. Redstone torch locks this hopper so that it is only able to distribute a single item at a time. This hovering hourglass is set to a two second timer using two pieces of sand. It's over this redstone dot, which powers this repeater, which powers this block, which flicks the torch on and off. And I am just going to set up this right here so that uh, this is the, uh, the entry mechanism. And yes, I think this is where I'm going to be setting up the... Uh, the constructs room because uh, they won't take up necessarily that much room as long as I pace it outright but I will have to uh, I will make a porch here and uh, maybe um, the porch will even be open air so that uh, they get some fresh air they get some daylight we can discuss that during the uh, the work union with our hungry node feeding mechanism set up the, uh, the infrastructure tested and um, made to work, I think now is a good time to call it here. So uh, thank you for watching. If you liked this video, why not like, subscribe, share with your friends, leave a comment if you want. And uh, next episode, we will have a fully automated setup for the Hungry Node. We will discuss payment with the rest of the workers and see uh, what they would like to be compensated in. Just so you know, the no need to uprise if the conditions you have are already are already good. You know. Until then, my name is Ben Warden, and I am signing off for tonight. Have a good evening, everybody.